welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Kenny Ola Kibowale. We begin in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where Felix Shizakedi has been sworn in as president in a ceremony in the capital, Kinshasa. President Shizakedi is taken over from Joseph Kabila, who ruled the country for 18 years. But many still dispute his victory in last month's presidential election. Numerous sources say his opponent, Martin Fiyulu, won a landslide victory and has been denied office by a backroom deal between Mr. Kibila and Mr. Shizakedi. In the Democratic Republic of Congo's first peaceful democratic transfer of power in nearly 60 years, Felix Shizakedi is inaugurated as president. He took the oath of office in front of a large and joyous crowd at the presidential palace in Kinshasa. Out of 17 African heads of states invited, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, was the only one in attendance. A 55-year-old father of five, Shisekedi is mostly known for being the son of late veteran opposition leader Etienne Shisekedi, but he insists he's not trying to rival his father. Addressing the nation on Wednesday, outgoing President Joseph Kabila said he had no regrets and called on Congolese citizens to support his successor whom he said could call on him for advice at any time. Though many are delighted and see the outcome as progress for the country democratically, there remains questions about Shisekedi's legitimacy. Many have accused him of striking a power-sharing deal with Joseph Kabila, whose party is the biggest in the new parliament. There is also widespread belief that he engineered Shisekedi's victory to ensure he'll still be able to dictate policy. Despite the speculations, Congolese citizens are hoping that their new leader will bring about the changes that he promised during the campaign. Moving on now, embattled Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir is receiving words of support from South Sudan as he faces deadly protests calling for him to step down. South Sudan won independence from Sudan in 2011 following decades of brutal fighting marked by the mass abduction and enslavement of children, ethnic cleansing and famines. Yet now, the former arch enemies describe themselves as the best of friends, bound together by a desperate need for oil revenue and peace to allow them to flow. South Sudan has just emerged from its own five-year civil war. Some from the South fear chaos in the North could derail their own peace deal, which Sudan helped initiate and guarantee. In return for peace, Sudan gets money. Landlocked South Sudan has most of the oil, but Sudan has the pipeline and port it needs to export it. South Africa's National Prosecuting Authority has dropped corruption charges against the son of former President Jacob Zuma. Last year, Dudu Zain Zuma was charged over an allegation that he and his business partners, the Guptas, offered a $43.3 million bribe to ANC MP Makbisi Jonas with the intention that he would take the job of finance minister. He turned them down. The MPA says they withdrew the charges because they did not want to run a parallel process alongside an official inquiry, which is also investigating the awarding of government contracts to the Guptas. But Dudu Zain Zuma is not completely out of the woods yet. In another court, a trial date was set for the 26th of March for a culpable homicide case where he's accused of reckless driving after a female passenger died when his sports car crashed into the rear of a minibus taxi in 2014.